Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool repair video for you today. We have got something extra special special today. Now all of our repair videos are fantastic. All of the games we work on are just some of the best ever, right? But this one today is really something special. Um, this is an Atari Warlords 4 player cocktail. Also known as one of the most desirable games out there, right? People love this thing. I think people like that uh, four people can play it at the same time, and it's pretty fun. Now, I have never worked on one of these. Um, this is another game that our uh, buddy Adam at the beach has sent up here for us to work on. This is not his game. It's one of his uh, customers. And apparently the gentleman has had this for a while, and he hasn't been able to get it working. And so we're going to see if we can do the trick. What do you think? So it seems to be in pretty good shape. And I think I know what's wrong with it because they told me what was wrong with it. Um, here is the little panel that goes over that. The coin box, I guess, isn't with it, but maybe they have that too. You don't really need it. So I'm going to show you the problem. So this is the game board. says Tempest on it. I hope it's not a Tempest board. <laughs> I don't believe it is. So here is the problem. Are you ready for this? Mm. So this gentleman said that he, he had a friend of his replace one of the RAM chips and the guy just completely hosed it man he like he really screwed up the traces apparently and then tried to fix it with a bunch of jumper wires <sighs> got my work cut out for me on this one people hmm so what we need to do is um, we need to take all that crap off and throw it in the trash. Take the socket back off and then try to do it a little cleaner and a little better. And then we might have to put jumpers back on it, I don't know. But you see how uh, there are little traces that connect one chip to another chip? So on the RAM chips, they always go, almost every pin connects to the RAM next to it in the same spot. Let me see if there's an, yeah. See, see the traces on the top of the board too, connecting that to that and that to that and that to that. So, got some RAM issues here, folks. Yeah, see those? See how there's all those traces connecting all of them together? So, something similar was going on down here, but unfortunately, they got all screwed up. And if you look at the board, it looks like the traces are actually gone. The whole thing. So, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And we don't even know if that's the problem. I hope that's the problem. If you fix that and then there's another problem and so you can't tell and you keep focusing on that RAM chip, that might be bad. All right, so this is coming up. <laughs> But uh, the first thing we're going to do is what we always do. We're going to start at the beginning where the power cord comes in and uh, measure voltages and all that stuff. Um, because if, even if I get this thing working, if the power supply doesn't work right, you could just fry the board, you know, or the board won't work anyway if the power supply doesn't work. So you, you've got to start at the beginning and kind of systematically work through it. That's the only way you can fix them to where they're reliable, at least in my opinion. Um, so it may seem like, oh, well, that's obviously the problem. If you fix that, that'll fix it. Yeah, that's obviously a problem, but I'll bet there's some mo. So we'll see. So whenever we get in a game that uh, has been moved and we don't really know what's up with it, we take it, we open it up, look inside it, and just see what happened in shipping. Because it could be like, you know, the monitor, the last guy that worked on it, maybe he didn't put the screws in the monitor board. 
you plug it into the wall and it blurs blows up everything on the bo on the monitor because it's shorted out to the plate underneath it or something like that. So we're just looking for things that are not in their proper place. So uh, again, I've never had one of these, so I'll figure out how to pop the top open. I, I would imagine that the top folds up like most Atari games. We'll figure that out, raise it all up and look inside of it and see what we got going on inside. Yeah, pop the top open on it. Let's check this thing out on the inside. Let's document it. You don't see these too often. Cocktail Warlords. Game option settings. Hey, this is an important note to operators. If the operation, maintenance, and service manual was not included in this game when you unpacked it, contact your distributor to get a free copy. All Atari manuals for coin-operated games also include a complete illustrated parts catalog. I will say that the Atari schematics and stuff are my favorite. They, t they really break it down and help you fix stuff. I mean, even like their test menus and stuff are nice. Okay, so you see the monitor, obviously. This is a... I believe, I'm just going to guess that this is a Sanyo. I think I've seen those before with the controls in the front. I may have that wrong. Uh, you've got the speaker over here. You've got the coin door over here. Um, and then you've got the uh, power supply there. Test switch, volume knob, service button. Down here on the bottom you have the famous Atari power brick. Um, and then you have what does appear to be a Sanyo monitor. <laughs> I had y'all crooked. I think that's a Sanyo. I may have that wrong. We'll pull it out and see here in a little bit. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, pull out that power brick and work on it a little bit. So we pulled the power brick out. Everything looks really good on it. It's uh, just a little dusty. It'll clean right up. Uh, we do have one blown fuse here, so I'm going to track that down and see what that goes to and why that would be blown. Um, but other than that, everything looks really good. Nothing's really even damaged. I'm going to go ahead and replace this big blue capacitor just because that's an original one. Um, and if you don't, rep it's from it's got the 1980 date code on it. If you don't replace it, you're going to end up where you've got power issues and it's going to be hard to keep the game reliably running. There's a loose screw, I mean a loose nut on the transformer. I don't know why that would be, but how'd that ever happen? Um, and then we're going to look at this board. We may have to replace those two diodes or we'll at least check them, I guess. Um, that's what the big blue goes into. This is one of the ones that has the diodes and doesn't have a bridge rectifier. Um, but yeah, everything looks really clean, very nice. So we'll clean it up even a little more. Oh, by the way, if, on stuff like this, if you just need to dust it off, we just use like an old paintbrush. A little, real cheap wood handled cheapo paintbrush. It doesn't get it perfect, but you get most of the dust off and makes it look nice and uh, nice and vintage, right? <laughs> so we'll clean it up a little bit. I'll swap the big blue. We've done this in like 10 videos, so I'll swap in a new big blue and uh, see what we got from there. Swapped out the big blue. Let's see here. The date code is at 8045, so I believe it's the 45th week of 1980. So that's a pretty old one. These, uh, they get the AC voltage or the ripple out of the DC voltage and makes the board run right. So swap that. You can test them too, but I mean, it's, it's 1980. <laughs> um, uh, this fuse that was blown, that's just for the coin door bulbs. Best possible scenario. And then this fuse, uh, it was a fast blow instead of a slow blow. So everything's cool though. It looked like they're probably the original fuses. So this thing is still in good shape. The two diodes that were underneath it uh, were both fine. And it cleaned up pretty good. So we're ready to pop this back in the uh, cabinet. And then we're going to pull out the uh, power supply and look at it a little bit. This is Atari's famous AR2 
regulator slash audio 2, but everybody calls it the AR2. I wonder why nobody ever called it the RA2. It's their famous RA2 power supply from 1979. This was in almost every Atari game, almost all of them. Um, and then there were revisions of it. So this is a this is known as a slash zero two revision. And so the different revisions had more or less stuff on them. So it was always the same board. So see how this one doesn't have anything in these spots. So one of the revisions will have a bunch of stuff there. And then there's some revisions where there's nothing on maybe this. I don't know if it's this side or the other side. It must be this side. There's nothing on this side. It's just all, everything's empty. And. Uh, so there's just different revisions. So there's an O2 revision in a Warlords. So uh, we're going to clean it up. We're going to um, um, resolder some of the connections on the uh, where the connectors go. Um, we're going to check this transistor. This is the five volt regulator. Those go bad a lot. Might have to replace that. The caps on these don't really go bad that often. I used to replace all the caps, but then was informed by some other people that that's pretty much unnecessary on these because they're all still working pretty good on the AR2 power supplies. How true that is, I don't know, but I'm going to see if we can just uh, leave the ones that are on there on there. So we'll clean it up a little bit. I'll test the transistors and stuff. These are the audio amps. You can't test those really, but the transistors you can just test like a regular transistor test with the three pins. And you can do the same with the voltage regulator there. And then you've got these two here, all attached to this big heat sink. And I'll check these diodes just for giggles. They're easy enough to test. But I don't see anything burnt up. A lot of times, Oh, did I speak too soon? Did I speak too soon? I think it's burnt a little bit. Maybe. It's usually this one and this one will burn up if you get resistance on the edge connector where it, it um, um, it's the power's not going through right. These are <laughs> the sense circuit they call it and so it it makes the power go the other way through the connectors and it burns up these resistors because there's too much power running through it blah 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 <laughs> there was this big battle about what they call the sense mod so on these games you can um, basically jumper over these resistors you can do it on the plug too but if you the sense mod it no longer uses the sense and by sense I mean s-e-n-s-e -E. I gotta spell it out because of my twang, right? The sense mod um, basically gets rid of the 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 um, the sense function that the that the board has. So basically, this power supply is adjustable on its own. So it sends out like five volts, and then it can the five volts goes on the board and then comes back on a what's called a sense line and comes back to this board. Well, if that the, it's a, you know, wired up in such a way that if that, so let's say you, you're sending out five volts to the board and then the sense line coming back from the board is only 4.5 volts. The board automatically raises the voltage. So now there's like 5.5 volts going to the board and then the sense line coming back reads five. So it goes, Oh, okay. That's how we want it. Um, but it's caused all kinds of problems over the years. So, uh, people call them. <laughs> so, uh, some people get rid of it. Answered the phone. Uh, so, uh, some people get rid of the sense circuit by doing a mod. So, the mod that you do is, so say the board's sending out 5 volts. You jumper it over to the sense circuit on the board so that the power supply thinks that the sense circuit is telling it that it's getting back 5 volts. And so, it never adjusts itself. So the problem with that is if the the main PCB um, isn't getting 5 volts, it uh, um, you have to manually adjust it with this little trim wheel. 
I've heard people explain both sides of it, why it's good to do the sense mod and why it's not good to do the sense mod. What it comes down to is it's personal preference. So I'm doing the sense mod. If people get mad, oh, well, they get mad. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, some people leave it all original and they, they say if your edge connector is really clean, the, the sense mod works, the, the original sense circuit works great. This is like a tongue twister. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and a peck of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, then a, where's the peck of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? <laughs> Those are the easy ones though, right? Um, so some people, they want it all original and there's reasons why it should be all original. There are also reasons why you should do the mod. We're doing the mod. If somebody doesn't like it, they can fix it later. Um, it's reversible. So uh, we'll clean this up, test everything. I'll do the little mod, which is just you put a couple little jumpers on the back. And uh, we'll put it back in. And then we need to test the voltages coming out of it. The coin door fuse was... was uh, the coin door bulb fuse was blown, so I pulled out the coin door bulbs. These are uh, number 40 or number 46 bulbs. They're uh, pretty obscure, but Atari used them in their very first cocktail table coin doors. They screw in. Most of them have little blades on them, but these are not the bayonet or the wedge style. They screw in, so we had to order some of these, but I didn't see anything wrong with anything, so I don't know why it the fuse blew, but maybe uh, something touched the wires on the back of them, shorted them together or something. But I figured I'd remove them while uh, we tested it and uh, while we wait on the new bulbs. But that's pretty... I think this gentleman want, just wants it to play. He's not too concerned about the light bulbs. But hey, if we've got it here and I'm filming a video, I might as well fix it. So we're ready to test the voltage and turn this sucker on. Here are those schematics we were talking about. They're all online. We got it all. We got all the cool stuff online. <laughs> right? So here is the power brick. You see it creates certain voltages and then it sends it over here to this power regulator board, which was the second one that we messed with. And it gets 36 volts and it gets 10 volts. And then it changes them around. You see here's where the speaker wires go out. And then here are your voltages. So you've got a ground, a negative 5, a, a, a positive 12, a positive 22, which is kind of weird. Uh, you've got the two audio inputs. You've got a 5 volt, 5 volt. You've got your positive sense and your negative sense, which we got rid of. And then you've got your 5 volt return, which is just another ground. So those go down and connect to the main board here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check on this harness at the main PCB because it's really easy to get to. I'm going to check the voltages there and see if we've got these. So I'm going to write down those numbers and check those voltages on the main PCB before I plug the PCB in because if something screwed up, like if the 5 is 15 or something, I don't want to plug my board into that. Um, but that should, uh, that should get us going. So we're going to check that. I'm going to just write down what the voltages should be and then we'll check uh, with the cabinet turned on and for for the for the for just this test I'm gonna unplug the monitor just to make sure we don't fry anything so we got it all back in I unplugged the monitor I turned it on um, pulled out the interlock switch and on the harness someone has replaced one of the connectors like this is the original one right so somebody has put a new one on the other one, which runs the power and everything, but they did a really good job doing it. So I don't know if the gentleman did this himself or if he had somebody do it, but whoever worked on this did a good job. I mean, it's all done very nice with heat shrink on it. Um, nice new connector with uh, nice new pins. So there's not going to be any connector issues on this thing. So we are down to, we need to see if the monitor works and we need to, uh, oh, and I checked all the voltages on the connector and they're all perfectly fine. Um, so we need to check to see if the monitor works and then we're going to plug that board in and see what, what we're at, what's going on with it right now with all those crazy jumper wires on it. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is I'll turn it back off, plug the monitor in and then we'll turn it on and see if we get neck glow and all that good jazz on the monitor. 
Okay, so I checked the coin door bulb fuse. It did not blow either, but remember there's no bulbs in it. Uh, I plugged the monitor back in. Let's see if it'll turn on, if we hear anything. I heard something. So if it's adjusted right, you really won't hear it, see anything on the screen. Um, because there's no image, but uh, you should see like some neck glow. Which I don't really see, but I'd just be too bright in here to see it. I don't know. I'm not convinced that the monitor is working. Oh, whoops. yes, the monitor is working. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see any neck glow, but I see tube glow. That's better. Okay, so the monitor is doing its thing. It doesn't have a signal going to it, so it's that kind of crazy. So that may need rebuild or something, but we won't really know until we get a signal on it. Okay, so we are to the point where it's safe to plug the board in. We're going to see what the board does now. It's got those jumper wires on it, so it's, it's not going to work. But maybe it'll show an image on the screen and say, hey, I'm all screwed up. So uh, let's grab that out of the box. So I've installed the board back in the holder, and we got the connectors on it. So we are, we are finally... Oh, by the way. This is the box that Adam sent it to us in. And it says Louie Warlord's Board. So I don't know if Louie's the gentleman's name that owns this machine, but that's what we're going to call him, whether it is or not. So we are finally to the point that Louie already knew we were at, right? I haven't really fixed anything yet. I've just worked through everything the way we always do, just so that I know for sure that that stuff's all good to go, you know? So now I know that the power brick's fine. I know that the power cord's fine. I know that the monitor works. I know that the power supply over there, the AR, the AR board is putting out the right voltages. I know that the connector's fine. So I've worked all the way through and now we're up to the actual game board, right? So theoretically, after you got that working, you would then work on the monitor and then finally you would get the controls working just right, right? So we're working from the wall all the way through everything in order. And it, so now I, we're up to the board now. If Louie was here, he probably would have told me already that, hey man, it's just the board screwed up, <laughs> right? But now we know that. So I know everything about this thing so far, right? So we're gonna turn it on, see if we get any problems, what, what it says on the screen. Now one of the RAM chips is missing out of the socket. So I know that's gonna be a problem, but we'll see if we get any kind of image on the screen. We got a red light on the board. I think the start button's flashed or something. Yeah, they just flashed again. All right. We're getting trippage. Major trippage. It's beeping. Things are going nuts. Coin counter's counting. Okay, so we're going to see if we can put it in test. I did hear a beep, so it's capable of beeping. All right, so it's just going nuts. All right. So it seems to be running some kind of test mode diagnostic. So let's go over here to our screen. I mean, our paper. It says, Instruction, unlock and open the tabletop, set self-test switch to on position. The monitor displays the picture below. You may hear a ticking sound. This is normal. So that should be what we've got. We don't have anything like that. RAM failure is indicated by the message bad RAM. ROM or PROM failure is indicated by the message bad ROM. Two, turn each shield control knob slowly back and forth and observe the monitor. A fireball will move smoothly on a diagonal across the screen. Ignore any wraparound that the fireball does on the screen. If the test fails, a fireball will jump erratically or not move at all, indicating a bad potentiometer or loose harness wires. Three, activate the following switches if you can reach them. 
slam, utility, coin, two coin mechanisms, and four LED switches. You will hear a high tone. Also, one of the characters in the fourth row of zeros and ones on the screen will change to a one, which means on. Simultaneously pressing and more and more switches will progressively lower the tone. Tone disappears when switch is released. Uh, if test fails, a tone produ produced while you are not pressing any switches indicates a shorted switch. No sound at all in indicates bad sound circuitry, loose speaker wires, bad switch circuitry, or volume control turned all the way down. Uh, all coin acceptors and LED lamps are lit. Result of test fails, either some or all lamps are dark, burned out. Okay. So, uh, we, it doesn't say... This is the first player set. It doesn't say uh, RAM OK, ROM OK, probably because the RAM or the ROMs are so screwed up that it can't display that properly. So uh, so what do we know about it right now? We know that the power, you know, we don't know that the power is good because now that I've plugged a board in it, maybe it may need more power. It was 5.04 with the board unplugged. So let's, uh, let's check the voltage and see what we're at now. Let's see here. Let's see here. Shall we? So we're going to set it on DC. Alright, so it tested we were at 4.93 volts. That's fine. Close enough to 5 that everything's cool. Uh, so the next step that we're going to do, we're going to pull out the board and we're going to clean and test all the ROMs. So we'll see if any of that's bad. So here's the board, here's the RAM chip that's missing, so I mean, of course the screen isn't going to look right, we have a whole RAM chip missing. Um, but we're going to check the ROMs first, so uh, when we're going to clean uh, the uh, CPU, and that's probably, yeah, that's a pokey. The famous pokey chip. This thing isn't sitting level because it has all those jumpers on the, bo on the bottom. So, let's see if we can carefully remove this chip out of its socket. Okay, and that is chip number M1, it says. So I have my trusty pocket programmer here. Uh, it says it's a 4716, which I'm going to assume is another way of saying it's a 2716. I've got some pins bent. I don't know if I can get it in there with one hand or not. Well, all right, so that's the 2716, I would suppose. So we're going to go here. Select the 2716. And all these ROM burners, they all have different stuff. We're not actually going to burn one right now. We're just going to uh, see if it's right. So it's uh, chip 1M in the ROM set and then we'll verify it. Device verified to buffer that quickly. Alright, so that one's good. So I'm going to go through on each one of these, clean the legs and put them back in their socket just to verify that all of them are good. Um, and I got, I'm using the ROM set out of MAME which usually is the, uh, the complete set. Sometimes you have to download a couple of them though. But anyway, so we'll go through, we'll check all of the chips, make sure everything's good. We'll clean the pokey, we'll clean the, the uh, CPU chip. And then uh, if all that's right, then we're on to that RAM. So I'm over to E1, and when I pulled it out, it's got one of the little legs bent over. That'll do it to it. So we'll bend that back straight and put it back in and I'll keep going but that would have caused some problems probably so that was probably part of the graphical screw up on the screen um, so we'll bend that straight and I'll test it and then we'll, we'll do the, the last few uh, and then we'll try it back in the machine just to see if that clears up the picture a little bit okay so on F6 I also found another one that the pin it looks like it broke off and somebody had soldered it back on or soldered it to the socket or something. So I'm going to swap the socket and I'm going to burn a new chip. And if I can find some 2716s, I think I've got some around there somewhere. So I'll burn and put a new socket in and burn a new one. And then we'll put it back in the game and see if that uh, gets us 
where the screen looks a little better, even with that RAM missing. I'm hoping that it'll maybe say that there's a RAM error or something or um, that we can see what's going on. You notice there's actually eight RAMs. Those four and those four. Uh, but we found two ROM problems, so it's good to get them figured out. So I'll burn another one. Oh, another interesting thing. On Warlords, these two chips are identical. If you look, and I looked it up just to make sure that was how it's supposed to be. If you look, these two ROMs have the exact same part number, and they're supposed to. Like, it's made like that. And I guess it's because the screen, if you think about it, it's four quadrants, and everything looks the same on both sides. So I guess it, for graphics ROM or whatever, it, um, it uses the same one twice for whatever reason. But, uh... We'll see if we can burn a new one. This is sitting on it. Matt's here. All right, so we reburned the uh, chip, and then we fixed the other one that had the bent leg. Uh, so we're gonna put it back in. Now we're still missing the RAM, so it's not gonna work right. But we're gonna see if that changes what's on the screen any at all, which would tell us if we we had a ROM problem that was giving us problems, or if they were somehow magically working with two legs missing. <laughs> The letter game. <laughs> He's not drinking beer, by the way. He's just goofy. <laughs> the uh, That didn't seem to help it any, but hey, at least now we know that the ROMs are all right. We play this game. <laughs> all right, so next thing, we're going to start messing with that freaking RAM chip. So that's, that's our next uh, issue. So this is what we're starting with. I mean, some of these aren't even hooked up like that one. So I think this guy just got in over his head on this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna remove all this crap and then uh, we'll get a good look at what, what it looks like and see if I can fix any of it. And uh, see if we can get it going. So yeah, I'm gonna take all that off. And then we'll start over again. We'll start over again clean. No mas problema. Now I gotta fix it all. Okay, so these two sockets were replaced at some point, and these are our problems. So if you look real close, you can see there's a bunch of. This is about as clean as I can get it, but if you look. All this looks pretty good. So that row there is good. But then over here, those are all good. Look, this one here is broken. So it would have went up through here and it probably connects to that. Um, this one here, the fourth one down, same thing. Comes through here and then it would have connected to the fourth one over here. So there's one, let's see, there's one, two here that are broke, basically. So I'm going to start putting them back in and working my way over, and then I've got to do little jumpers on the back like they did, but I'm gonna, my, my goal is I want to use less of them, so hopefully I'll be able to use less of them. So these top three here might work. This fourth one here, it looks like it's not even connected, though, to the trace anymore. Um, the fifth one is not connected, at least to this trace. The sixth one is not connected to that trace. Um, the seventh one is not connected to that trace. This bottom one's not connected. This one's not connected. This one's not connected. This one's not connected. This one's not connected. And that trace went to here, but it also went through here. And connected to there, the whole trace has been pulled up off the board. So yeah, I got quite a few that I'm going to have to do. <sighs> fun, fun, fun. So I think what I'll do first is I'll put, I'm going to put, I'm going to use the pin strips, which aren't the best, but it'll be better for this because I can put them in and then it, we may have to put some solder on the top and we'll be able to see where everything touches or doesn't touch and all that. So uh, we're going to use the machine pin strips. And then on the back, this one 
everything looks cool we can replace all that but this one has got some issues and then this one I don't know what was going on there I think they had I think that's where they had all of their jumpers it was attached to that so so I'll put the four strips back in and that'll be uh, something to start with okay folks so here is my handiwork so I carefully went and I traced out every freaking pin on both of those sockets. Now, keep in mind, we don't even know if it's the right RAM. Those RAM might have been fine. What if that RAM screwed up? And, and this game doesn't have a RAM test, so you can't really... Like, it doesn't do like some of the other Atari games where it just beeps and tells you which one. This one's interesting, by the way. This jumper here, that's factory. And if you look, this even this orange wire, if you look, it was originally a blue wire because it was factory. So I'm leaving that alone because I think it's supposed to be like that. Okay, so I, I used my multimeter and I checked everywhere there's a trace. Look at all that crap. So like whenever, like this pin should be connected to this pin, which should be connected to that pin. So I checked and got and, and I went through and checked every little freaking trace every one of them <laughs> on this chip this chip and this chip and then also over here where they they go past it now to the best of my knowledge the best I can tell it's perfectly connected everything everything that's supposed to be touching everywhere is touching everywhere so so we're gonna we're gonna hope that's it now if I put it in and it doesn't work, then I'm going to have to take it all back out and check it all again and I missed something, right? Or this RAM's bad, or this RAM's bad. I wonder if that RAM's bad. Could that RAM possibly be bad? <laughs> so, I mean, this is some crazy stuff we're doing here. So basically, I'm check I'm I'm um I'm betting on Louie having tracked it down to the to the right two RAM for me. Because if my traces are screwed up still, and this RAM's bad. I'll never figure it out. <laughs> Damn you, Louie. All right, so I'm going to put two new RAM in it, and we'll put it in and see if anything works. Okay, so we'll see. Keep your fingers crossed out there in uh, TV land, YouTube land. Mm-hmm. Same thing, Matt. It's still broke, Matthew. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. I am moving the... No, it's moving on its own. No, no, you're, you're changing the position. Nah, it looks just you're doing sure? it without me. You sure? I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you're doing something. It may have been like that before, though, and I didn't know. True. That is kind of weird. I remember it did that a while ago. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Bad RAM, ROM OK. We're getting there. Won't be long now. <laughs> mm. So now we get to try to figure out which RAM. So let's try going back out into the main game. Hey. Boy, she's trying. Look like probably just one chip's bad. Uh, hard to say. I think what we're going to have to do is replace all the RAM. <laughs> There's probably a way to figure it out, though. I'm, let me. I'll look into how to figure out which RAM's bad. There's probably a way to tell. I, I mean, I would assume it's the ones that. Would that be normal? Or hacked can, up? That you can read this here, and then you can read this here. Is it designed like that? Uh, you see what I'm saying? It was flipped in the middle. Yeah, I, I think so. I would think it would because it's a two-player. Yeah. Player. I don't know, man. This is new to me. But I think we're a little further along than we were. All right. So that's tomorrow's baby. Tomorrow we'll mess with it a little more. All right. It is the next day. We're going to try to fix this thing some mo 
So we are on UKVAC.com on their forum, and Mr. Battlezone, who is a senior member, three years ago was working on a Warlords, and he was he did something very nice for us. He figured out which RAM does what. So you can see the screw up that he had on his screen. So you want to look at the the monitor and figure out where the top is. So the top is right there. It says Atari Inc. at the top. So we're turned sideways. So if I was to turn the camera, you are now looking at it the correct way. Let's turn you back. Did that give you vertigo? Man, I'm strong. I picked all of y'all up and turned you sideways like that. No problem. Okay, so you can tell, apparently, which RAM are messed up by looking at the lines in the screen. So see how there are half of the screen is messed up, but half of the screen looks good. And then on this half of the screen, only half of it's messed up. So there are lines. So this is line one, that's correct. Line two is messed up. Line three is correct. Line four is messed up. Line five is correct. And so all of the even lines on the left side of the screen have screwed up characters on them, right? So that's your little clue. So let's look at ours again, okay? So I've got it on free play and I've got it in the main attract mode. And if you look, the right side has a couple little weird things happening, right? But it's mainly the left side. And if you look, the top row is right, but the second row is screwed up, third row is right, fourth row is screwed up. So our even ones, just like in his picture, our even row on the left side is definitely messed up. We've probably got other stuff, but that's the first thing that's messed up. So we're gonna see if we can figure that out first. So let's go back and look at what he was saying. Okay, so he says, here is the mapping. H3 and H5 are the left side odd rows, 1, 3, blah, blah, blah. J3 and J5 are the right side odd rows. K3 and K5 are the left side even rows. So remember, that's what we've got screwed up, the left side even rows. So he's saying K3 and K5 control that. L3 and L5 are the right side even rows. Okay, so that would be over here. So our right side looks decent. Left side, it's the even rows. So left side, even rows, K3 and K5. When the chips in column three are bad, one region tends to get filled with letters, typically E's. That's exactly what we're seeing, right? It's exactly what we're seeing. When a chip in column five is bad, you tend to get solid blocks with circular shapes in it. When both are bad, like the, the uh, the both of those RAM chips are removed, you tend to get solid blocks. Okay, so uh, the, the, the RAM all work in pairs. So H3 and H5, J3 and JK, I mean J5, K3 and K5, L3 and L5. So the pair we're interested in, it, he says, is K3 and K5. And then he's saying when it's the one in column three, you get a bunch of letters. So he's suggesting that he believes chip K3 is bad. So we're going to test that theory. I wonder if that's one of those ones we were we were soldering on. I bet it is, but we'll see. We'll see, right? So we're going to we're going to pull the board out and see if we can mess with it with a logic probe. Well, I was going to do the logic probe, but sure enough, the one that he's saying is messed up is one of the ones that we've been working on. So that is a brand new chip. So uh no no need to use the logic probe. I just need to keep using the multimeter to see uh make sure everything's connected as it should be so I must have something off so we're going to switch gears and I'm going to pull out the schematic sheet look at the schematic of that uh, RAM chip and then I'm just going to test it right there in the socket and make sure everything is connected on the chip uh, to what it should be connected to according to the schematic so we're going to do that next let's see what we can figure out so in the schematics here are the RAM chips on that bank. So L3, K3, J3, and H3. As you can see, we're looking at the top. Pin 17 is connected together on all of them. Pin 18 and 19 are connected together on all of them. So you can check that with a multimeter, right? And then here on the left, as you can see, uh, the address lines there. Pin 7, 6, 5, 21, 1, 2, 3, and 4 connect to every one of them. 
because that's the address lines. Then on the left, also pins 9, 11, 13, and 15 are all connected together. Those are uh, the data lines. Um, now the other four data lines, so data line 4, 5, 6, and 7, probably go down to the other four RAM chips. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, see? So down here, 4, 5, 6, and 7 connect to these. But since we're looking at trace issues, what we're, all we need to figure out is which pins of each RAM should be, ch should be connected to what. And basically they're all connected to each other, like all of the RAM connect to each other, essentially. Okay, you got a couple little exceptions. So down here on the bottom, you get your ex uh, exceptions. So uh, you can see that pin, uh, starting from the right, pin 10, 12, 14, 16, and 20 are completely different on each chip. So those shouldn't be connected to each other. So we're going to see what those should connect to. So K3, whenever. So what I'm saying is all of these lines and these lines, I can see if all of these four RAM chips, if all of those pins are connected together. So you, you can use your multimeter to see if pin 17 on L3, K3, J3, and H3 are all connected together. That's how it should be. Right, and I can see if pin number three is connected to the same pin on L3, K3, J3, and H3. And if I get to where that's missing somewhere, it's you know it's not connected to K3. Well, then I need to look at that connection or that jumper or whatever that we use to fix the board there. And we'll just keep going through it and make sure everything's connected and making good contact. And then you also need to carefully look to make sure that nothing's connected to something it shouldn't be, so you, that you don't have two pins connected together with some solder or something like that. But then when we get down here to the bottom, since the ones on K3 specifically go to different things than the other chips, the way we'll check that is we'll follow it down into this bus here and then we'll check it against these chips that it comes out connected to over here. So we're looking for uh, P PFD, I guess that is, Playfield Data, PFD 16, 17, 18, and 19. Uh, which connects to there's 17, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So I can check from this pin to see if this is connected to this pin. I'm gonna have to go do it and check every freaking one of those. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. I mean, we do this all the time, so. Hopefully we'll find something. Uh, and then Playfield WR, I don't know what that means, but WRO, WR1, WR2, WR3, WR2 is the one we're interested in. But like I said, you also have to make sure that two of them aren't connected together or that one of your jumper wires isn't touching another one and connecting physically to it, you know, or, or electrically to it. So uh, we'll check, I'll check through that and if I find anything suspicious, uh, I'll film it but hopefully we'll find a line completely broke because then we'll know what the problem is and we'll be able to fix it. Okay, so after rechecking everything, I found four things wrong. So pins 18 and 19 are supposed to be connected to ground. One of them was, one of them wasn't. So I couldn't tell from underneath the board, but uh, there was supposed to be a jumper between 18 and 19. It was on the other RAM chips, um, but it should have been on that one too, and it wasn't, so I added that. And then uh, pin 22 was no longer connected to 5 volts. Well, the 5 volts is what makes the whole chip work. So, <laughs> so uh, that's a problem, right? So I, I added uh, some solder to that to get it connected over to the main trace. And then pin number 2, which was PFA2, Playfield Address 2, was missing from K3 and from L3. It was over here on J3 and H3, but it wasn't on L3 and K3, and it looked like it came through L3 first. So since it wasn't connected here, it wasn't connected to any of the other. Like these two were connected together, but these two weren't. There was a break somewhere. So I put yet another jumper on that, and uh, so now that's all through. So now whenever I check it, like I was saying, every one of these that's supposed to be connected is. All of these were where they were supposed to be. This PFWR2 is a control line as well that comes from uh, uh, way over on the first sheet of the schematics. And that was connected, so there wasn't any problem with that. So our problems were pin two, pins 18, 19, and then pin 22, which is how the whole chip gets power. So there's no way that RAM chip 
uh, would have worked without that power. So we're going to put it back in the game and see if uh, the screen looks any better. All right, everything mounted back up. Keep your fingers crossed. Holy moly. I don't see anything wrong with it. I wonder if the ball's bouncing right. Uh, yeah, looks like our RAM problems are gone. Um, can you see our orange line down in there? Just to <laughs> prove it's the same board. I fixed it, I think. Holy moly. Do you know what that's from? The holy moly. That's from uh, Swamp People. Oh, well, that was different. It was supposed to be doing that the whole time, I guess. Let's do that again. This is what the test should have been doing the whole time. So this is the gameplay. This is what happens when you go in a test. All right, so it said in the manual and up here, whenever you turn the pots, it should make a fireball move. Diagonally across the screen. And it is. Okay. I wonder if all of them do that. Oh yeah, it's making it move a different direction. Okay, let's try these. Yep. I think. Yep. Okay, let's see what it said. Uh, Turn each shield control knob slowly back and forth and observe the monitor. A fireball will move smoothly on a diagonal across the screen. Ignore any wraparound that the fireball does on the screen. Well, that's good because I was worried about that. Result if test fails. A fireball will jump erratically or not move at all, indicating a bad potentiometer or loose harness wires. Wow. Um. Hmm. I think we fixed it. We got to worry about the sound still, so let's see if that's smooth. Yes, that is smooth. So let's see if this one's smooth. Ah, uh, jumping a little bit. So that one maybe needs... This one feels much smoother whenever you turn it. Look, it even has a what looks like a new knob. Uh, let's see if this one's smooth. No, it jumps around a little bit too. Huh. Well, I think the knobs maybe need a little contact cleaner in them, but everything seems to be working. So here we go. Are you ready for this? Give it a little sound. again. Hmm, got me again.
Mm. Oh no! You sunk my battleship! Enter your initials. Okay. What's my name again? <laughs> STD. Hmm. Okay. I think we fixed it, folks. I wonder if he wants the monitor rebuilt. Or maybe we'll just try to adjust it. Okay, so I'm going to lay the top down and see if the monitor is supposed to be that small, like it's smaller than the uh, image, or if uh, we got some voltage things going on here. It looks like it's pulsing a little bit, like maybe it needs recapped. Hmm. Yeah, let me lay the top back down. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it needs to be bigger. You can see pretty much the whole area of the tube, so I need to get it filling up the whole area of the tube. Hmm. That's how it's moving up and down. It's The image is getting slightly bigger and slightly smaller. That's a, like a voltage regulator problem. It means that the, the B-plus voltage is pulsing, so it's like... If it's supposed to run at like 108, it's going 115, 100, 115, 100, and the image is getting bigger and smaller. And that's probably capacitors. So we'll uh, we'll check some stuff, see if the customer wants us to rebuild the monitor or just leave it because it is working. I could probably adjust it a little bit, but we'll check, see what he says. Okay, folks, so we rebuilt the monitor. We got the width a little wider on it. Got the uh, the picture a little bit bigger. Everything's playing good. And it's ready to go. We let the customer know. Um, it's all good. So uh, I guess that's the end of the video. We're going to do another video, though, where we uh, play it a little bit. So we'll, uh, we'll film that soon. And... Uh, show this thing off a little bit such a cool game very well designed very colorful too as you can see so another one rides the bus glad we were able to fix it up and work on such a cool game um, make sure to leave your comments below let us know what you think about it do you remember playing this thing back in the day if you do let us know where make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and hopefully this will help you fix yours if you end up with uh, a warlords with problems. Oh, they made an upright too, you know, a stand-up one. But that one's even harder to find, it seems like. Maybe we'll get one of those in one of these days. What do you think? Anything's possible. So leave your comments below. Make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already. Even if you're on Roku, you can subscribe to us. Just go down below the the, the bar and there's some stuff you can press to subscribe to us. Um, and uh, we will see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.